The subject of birth control was likely to make conspicuous those who identified themselves with it. Average well-to-do persons hesitated, except for the Jewish leaders. Skip the Twin Cities, the most conservative in America. You won't get six people there. Oh, yeah? Hundreds of chairs had to be brought into the Minneapolis Public Library to take care of the overflow, don't you know? <laughs> I set out for Indianapolis to attend the social workers conference at the Claypool Hotel. Catholic priests protested and raved at my being allowed to speak before the meeting. This'll kick the football of birth control straight across to the Pacific. Social agents like the plume darts of the seeded dandelion puffed into the air, scattered to every corner of the country. St. Louis, Victoria Theater, Sunday night. Doors locked under threat of Catholic boycott. 2,000 people filled the air with cat calls and cries of Catholics on the town, break down the door. The Men's City Club, regarding the event as an embarrassment, invited me to speak at their luncheon the next day. Many impatient and selfish young husbands have plunged ahead to self-gratification with such reckless rapidity that the conjugal relation is forever tainted. <laughs> Leaving her in this dissatisfied state is far from humane. More marriages fail from inadequate and clumsy sex love than from too much sex love. Sex love without passion is a poor, lifeless thing. There are many girls who, upon any contact with the semen, have a disgust and repulsion from which it takes some time to recover. <laughs> the male sex urge is strong. A far-seeing wife must be tender to such a husband, proud of his deep, primitive energies. Passion is a thing to be proud of. Her problem is to dominate and perhaps sublimate these savage instincts. The wife has an active part to play. There are many women who have never experienced the supreme moment of the love drama. If the purely physical aspect threatens to usurp command, the heightened, accelerated rhythm may be brought to a standstill. The effect will be magical. The clitoris is the special seat of sex sensitiveness in the woman. Like the penis in the man, this diminutive organ contains numerous sensory nerve endings. The bridegroom should never forget that the average woman of normal health and vigor requires at least 20 minutes for the completion of the act of preparation alone. When a woman is completely satisfied, her whole being is built up and beautified through it. Her form develops, her eyes become brighter, her health improves, color comes into her cheeks. Every architect wants to embody his ideas in his own home. After I left the Middle West and reached the Rocky Mountains, the atmosphere changed. Formerly, my listeners, with the exception of Indianapolis, had been chiefly of the working class. Here there were wives of doctors, lawyers, petty officials, members of clubs. No one would consider embarking in the medical or legal profession without due preparation. But anyone, no matter how moronic, how diseased mentally or physically, has the right to become a parent. <laughs> I propose a Bureau of Application for the Unborn. The unborn child looks at his prospective parents and propounds a few questions to the father. You happen to have a health certificate? <laughs> and to the mother. How are your nerves? What do you know about baby? What kind of table do you set? And to both. What are your plans for bringing me up? I might have spent my childhood days in factories or mills, or might have had the opportunities offered by an intelligent, healthy family life. I'm unusually gifted. Do you know how to develop my talents? What sort of society have you made for the fullest expression of my genius? <laughs> All babies come back to the practical question. How many children have you already? Eight. How much are you earning? Ten dollars a week and living in two rooms, you say? No, thank you. Next, please. <laughs> the ferment was working violently. Radicals, some of whom I did not even know, were getting themselves arrested and jailed. It was always a problem to prevent emotional scatterbrains from disturbing the clear flow of the stream. I decided to open a clinic in New York City. Brownsville was particularly dingy and squalid. Block after block of unpainted houses bursting with excess humanity. Immigrants herded into slums, diseased social burdens, huddled together like rabbits to multiply their numbers in the misery. The inhabitants were mostly Jews and Italians. I preferred a Jewish landlord, and Mr. Rubinowitz was the answer. He was willing to let us have number 46 Amboy Street at $50 a month. Mothers, can you afford to have a large family? 
Do you want any more children? If not, why do you have them? Do not kill, do not take life, but prevent. Safe, harmless information can be obtained of trained nurses at 46 Amboy Street near Pipkin Avenue, Brooklyn. Tell your friends and neighbors, all mothers welcome. A registration fee of 10 cents entitles any mother to this information. October 6, 1916, the three of us, Fanny Mandel, my sister Ethel Byrne, and myself, opened the doors of the first birth control clinic in America. Would the women come? Nothing, not even the ghost of Anthony Comstock could have kept them away. Halfway to the corner, they were standing in line, at least 150. Mothers were ushered into Ethel and me in the rear room from five to 10 at once. Abortion is the wrong way. No matter how early it is performed, it is taking life. Contraception is the better way because life has not yet begun. Many were kept away by the report that police were terrorists for performing abortions. Clinic was a word that to the uneducated usually signified such a place. If no children are desired, the meeting of the sperm and the ovum must be prevented. If a contraception is not used and the sperm meets the ovule and development begins, any attempt at removing it or causing it, stopping its further growth is called abortion. If there's the slightest possibility that conception may have taken place, take five or 10 grains of quinine with a hot drink by taking the above precaution, you'll prevent the ovum from making its nest in the lining of the womb. Nine days went by without interference. And then one afternoon, a woman bought a copy of What Every Girl Should Know and insisted on paying $2 instead of the usual 10 cent fee. I am certain this is a policewoman. We have nothing to hide. Received from Mrs. Tierney as her contribution. Are you Mrs. Sanger? You are under arrest. stayed the night at the Raymond Street Jail. Having in mind the disease occupants who may have preceded me, I could not bring myself to slip under the covers. The bed clothing of the cot was so filthy that it stench nauseated me. <gasps> Bugs, ah! roaches, ah! rats. <laughs> My bail was arranged by afternoon. The attorney who offered himself, J.J. Goldstein, was one of those young Jewish men of promise. The seeds of social service had been planted in him. We request a jury trial, Your Honor. Denied. We request Your Honor recuse himself. Denied. I sent Judge McInerney an open letter. Do you, in your deepest conscience, consider yourself qualified to try my case? In those birth control cases at which you have presided, you have shown to all thinking men and women an unfailing prejudice, an exposed mind steeped in the bigotry and intolerance of the Inquisition to come before you implies conviction. Judge McInerney made application to the district attorney to be taken off this case. We freely admitted that we had prescribed birth control methods, but denied the district attorney's accusation that the 10 cent registration fee made this a money-making affair. This and other sensational charges, such as the clinic was intended to do away with the Jews, was often inserted in the record for reporters to pick up. My sister Ethel was convicted and sentenced. The warden was unprepared for prisoners who were guilty of a legal wrong in order to obtain a legal right. My sister Ethel had gone 103 hours without eating when she was forcibly fed, the first woman to be so treated in this country. The process was simple. Rolled her in a blanket so she could not struggle. Then we forced milk, eggs, and a stimulant into her tummy through a rubber tube. In the midst of my anxiety over Ethel, my own trial started. There were three justices. I did not expect anything from old Judge Herman except that because he was Jewish, he might be broad-minded. As to Judge O'Keefe, we had no illusion. Margaret Sanger, you maintain the birth control clinic. The judgment of the court is that you be confined to the workhouse for 30 days. 
No miracle. Get ready there, you. For what? For the doctor. Do you hear me? Go in and get your examination. I am not being examined. Oh.